Sri Sai Sacharitra The Wonderful Life and Teachings of Sri Sai Baba Chapter 28 Sparrows Drawn to Shirdi Number 1 Lakshmi Chand Number 2 Burhanpur Lady Number 3 Megha Preliminary Sai is not finite or limited he dwells in all beings from ants and insects to the god brahma he pervades all sai was well versed in the knowledge of the vedas as well as in the science of self realization as he was proficient in both these he was well fitted to be the sadguru any one though learned but not able to awaken the disciples and establish them in self realization does not deserve to be called a sadguru generally the worldly parents give birth to the body but death invariably follows life but sadguru does away with both life and death and so he is more kind and merciful than anybody tai baba often said that let his man or devotee be at any distance a thousand kos away from him he will be drawn to shirdi like a sparrow with a thread tied to its feet this chapter describes the stories of three such sparrows number 1 lala lakshmi chand this gentleman was first serving in the shri venkateshwar press in mumbai then in the railway department and afterwards in the firm of messrs rally brothers and co as a munshi or clerk he got the contact of baba in 1910 One or two months before Christmas he saw in his dream at Santa Cruz which was a suburb of Mumbai an old man with a beard standing and surrounded by his bhaktas a few days later he went to the house of his friend Mr Dattatreya Manjunath Bijur to hear the kirtan by Das Ganu it was and is always the practice of Das Ganu to keep baba's picture in front of the audience while doing the kirtan Lakshmi Chand was surprised to see that the features of the old man he saw in his dream tallied exactly with those in the picture and thus he came to the conclusion that the old man he saw in his dream was Sai Baba himself the sight of this picture Das Ganu's kirtan and the life of the saint Tukaram on which Das Ganu discoursed All these things made a deep impression on his mind and he decided to go to Shirdi. It is always the experience of the bhaktas that God always helps them in their search for Sadguru and other spiritual endeavors. That very night a friend named Shankara Rao knocked at his door and asked him whether he would accompany him to Shirdi. His joy knew no bounds and he at once decided to go to Shirdi. He borrowed rupees 15 from his cousin and after making due preparations left for Shirdi. In the train he and his friend Shankar Rao did some bhajan or sang religious songs and enquired about Sai Baba with some fellow passengers four Mohammedans who were returning to their place near Shirdi. They all told them that Sai Baba was a great saint living in Shirdi for many years. When they reached Koper Gaon he wanted to buy some good guavas for offering to Baba but he was so much enwrapped with the scenery and sights there that he forgot to purchase them When they were nearing Shirdi he was reminded of the guavas just then he saw an old woman with a guava basket on her head running after the tonga The tonga was stopped and he gladly purchased some fruits when the woman said take all the rest and offer them on my behalf to baba the facts namely that he had intended to purchase guavas but had forgotten to do so the old woman's encounter and her devotion to baba all these were a pleasant surprise to both the friends and lakshmi chand thought in his mind that the old woman might be some relation of the old man he saw in his dream then they drove on and came near shirdi and on seeing flags on the masjid they saluted them with puja materials in hand they went to the masjid and worshiped baba with due formality lakshmi chand was much moved and was extremely happy to see baba 
He was enwrapped with Baba's feet as a bee with a sweet-smelling lotus. Then Baba spoke as follows. Cunning fellow, he does bhajan on the way and enquires from others. Why ask others? Everything we should see with our own eyes. Where is the necessity to question others? Just think for yourself whether your dream is true or not. Where was the necessity of the darshan by taking a loan from a marbari? Is the heart's desire now satisfied? Hearing these words, Lakshmi Chand was wonderstruck at Baba's omniscience. He was at a loss to know how Baba came to know about all the things that had happened en route from his house to Shirdi. The chief thing to note in this respect is that Baba never liked people to borrow or take loan for his darshan or celebrating any holiday or making any pilgrimage. Sansa at noon, when Lakshmi Chand was sitting for meals, he got some sansa or wheat pudding from a devotee as prasad. He was pleased to have it. Next day also, he expected it but got nothing. So, he was anxious to get it again. Then, on the third day, at the noon arati time, Bapu Sahib Jog asked Baba what naivedya he should bring. Baba told him to bring sansa. Then the bhaktas brought two big potfuls of sansa. Lakshmi Chand was very hungry and there was some pain in his back. Then Baba said to him, It is good that you are hungry. Take sansa and some medicine for the pain in the back. He was again wonderstruck to see that Baba again read his mind and spoke out what was passing therein. How omniscient was he! Evil Eye During this visit, he, that is Lakshmi Chand, also witnessed one night the procession to the Chavadi. Baba then suffered much from cough. He thought that this suffering of Baba might be due to somebody's evil eye. Next morning, when he went to the masjid, Baba spoke to Shama as follows. I suffered last night from cough. Is it due to some evil eye? I think that somebody's evil eye has worked out on me and so I am suffering. In this case, Baba spoke out what was passing in Lakshmi Chan's mind. On seeing these proofs of Baba's omniscience and kindness to his bhaktas, he fell prostrate at Baba's feet and said, I am much blessed with your darshan. Ever be kind and merciful to me and protect me always. There is no other God to me in this world except you. Let my mind be ever wrapped in your bhajan and feet. Let your grace protect me from the miseries of the world and let me ever chant your name and be happy. After getting Baba's udi and blessing, he returned home with his friend, much pleased and contented, and was singing Baba's glory on the way. He remained a staunch devotee of Baba afterwards and always sent garlands of flowers, camphor and dakshina with any person of his acquaintance bound for Shirdi. Burhanpur Lady Now let us turn to another sparrow or devotee. One lady in Burhanpur saw in her dream Sai Baba coming to her door and begging kichdi or rice cooked with dal and salt for his meals. On waking up she saw nobody at her door. However, she was pleased with the vision and told it to all including her husband. He was employed in the postal department and when he was transferred to Akola, both husband and wife who were devout persons decided to go to Shirdi. Then on a suitable day they left for Shirdi and after visiting Gomati Tirth on the way reached Shirdi and stayed there for two months. Every day they went to the masjid, performed Baba's worship and pass their time happily. The couple came to Shirdi to offer Kichdi as Naivedya, but for the first 14 days, somehow or other, it could not be offered. The lady did not like this delay or tardiness. Then, on the 15th day, she came at noon to the masjid with her Kichdi. There she found that Baba and others were already sitting for meals and that the curtain was down. Nobody dared enter in when the curtain was down 
but the lady could not wait. She lifted up the curtain and entered. Strange to say that Baba seemed that day hungry for khichdi and wanted that thing first and when the lady came in with the dish, Baba was delighted and began to eat morsel after morsel of khichdi. On seeing the earnestness of Baba in this respect, everybody was wonderstruck and those who heard the story of khichdi were convinced about his extraordinary love for his devotees. Mega. Now let us go to the third sparrow. Mega of Viram Gaon was a simple and illiterate Brahmin cook of Rao Bahadur H. V. Sate. He was a devotee of Shiva and always chanted the five syllabled mantra Namah Shivai. He did not know the Sandhya nor its chief mantra the Gayatri. Rao Bahadur Sate was interested in him, taught him the Sandhya and the Gayatri. Sate told him that Sai Baba of Shirdi was the embodied form of the god Shiva and made him start for Shirdi. At the Broch railway station, he learned that Sai Baba was a Muslim and a simple and orthodox mind was much perturbed at the prospect of bowing down to a Muslim and he prayed to his master not to send him there. His master, however, insisted on his going there and gave him a letter of introduction to his that is Sate's father-in-law Ganesh Damodar alias Dada Kelkar at Shirdi to introduce him to Sai Baba. When he reached Shirdi and went to the masjid, Baba was very indignant and would not allow him to enter. Kick out the rascal, roared Baba and then said to Mega, you are a high caste Brahmin and I am a low Muslim. You will lose your caste by coming here. Just get away. On hearing these words, Mega began to tremble. He was wondering as to how Baba had come to know about what was passing in his mind. He stayed there for some days, serving Baba in his own way, but was not convinced. Then he went home and then to Triambak of Nasik district and stayed there for a year and a half. Then again he returned to Shirdi. This time, at the intercession of Dada Kelkar, he was allowed to enter the masjid and stay in Shirdi. Sai Baba's help to Mega was not through any oral instruction. He worked upon Mega internally and mentally with the result that he was considerably changed and benefited. Then Mega began to look upon Sai Baba as an incarnation of Shiva. In order to worship Shiva, Bale leaves are required and Mega used to go miles and miles every day to bring them and worship his Shiva or Baba. His practice was to worship all the deities in the village and then come to the masjid and after saluting Baba's Gadi or Asan, he worshipped Baba and after doing some service of shampooing his legs, drank the washings or teeth of Baba's feet. Once it so happened that he came to the masjid without worshipping Kantoba as the door of the temple was closed. Baba did not accept his worship and sent him again saying that the door was open then. Mega went, found the door open, worshipped the deity and then returned to Baba as usual. Ganges bath. On one Makar Shankranti day, Mega wanted to besmear the body of Baba with sandal paste and ba bathe him with Ganges water. Baba was first unwilling to undergo this but at his repeated requests he consented. Mega had to traverse a distance of eight course that is going and returning to bring the sacred water from the Gomti river. He brought the water, made all preparations for the bath at noon and asked Baba to get ready for the same. Then Baba again asked him to, to be spared from this bath, saying that as a fakir he had nothing to do with the Ganges water. But Mega did not listen to him. He knew that Shiva is pleased with Abhishek or sacred bath on that auspicious day. Baba then consented, came down and sat on a wooden board and projecting his head said, O Mega, do at least this favor. Head is the most important organ of the body, so pour the water over that only. It is equivalent to the whole bath. 
All right, said Mega, and lifting the water pot up, began to pour it on the head. But in doing this, he was so much overwhelmed with love that he cried out, Har Har Gange, or Hail Goddess Ganga, and emptied the pot on the whole body. He kept the pot aside and began to look at Baba, but to his surprise and amazement, he found that only Baba's head was drenched while the body was quite dry. Trident and Pindi Mega worshipped Baba at two places. In the masjid, he worshipped Baba in person, and in the vada, Baba's big picture given by Nana Sahib Chandorkar. This he did for twelve months. Then, in order to appreciate his devotion and confirm his faith, Baba gave him a vision. One morning, when Mega was still lying down on his bed with eyes closed but internally awake, he saw clearly Baba's form. Baba knowing him to be awake through akshata or rice grains marked red with kumkum and said megha draw a trident and disappeared hearing baba's words he eagerly opened his eyes saw no baba there but only rice grains spread here and there he then went to baba told him about the vision and asked permission to draw trident baba said did you not hear my words asking you to draw trident? It was no vision but direct order. My words are always pregnant with meaning and never hollow. Mega said, I thought you woke me up, but all the doors were closed, so I was doubtful and thought it to be a vision. Baba rejoined, I require no door to enter. I have no form. I always live everywhere. As a wire puller, I carry on all the actions of the man who trusts me and merges in me. Mega returned to the Vada and drew a red trident on the wall near Baba's picture. Next day, a Ramadasi Bhakta came from Pune, saluted Baba and offered him Pindi, a phallic image of Shiva. At this time, Mega also turned up there. Baba said to him, See, Shankar has come. Protect, that is, worship him now. Mega was pleasantly surprised to see Pindi. Also in the Vada, Kaka Sahib Dikshit was standing with a towel on his head after having taken his bath and was remembering Sai when he saw a Pindi before his mental vision. While he was wondering about this, Mega came and showed him the Pindi presented to him by Baba. Dikshit was happy to know that this pindi exactly tallied with the one he saw a few minutes before in his vision. In a few days after the drawing of the trident was complete, Baba installed the pindi near the big picture which Mega was worshipping. The worship of Shiva was dear to Mega and by the drawing of the trident and the installation of the pindi, Baba confirmed his faith therein. After continuous service of Baba for many years, doing regular worship and arati every noon and evening, Mega passed away in 1912. Then Baba passed his hands over his mortal remains and said, This was a true devotee of mine. Baba also ordered that at his own expense, the funeral dinner should be given to the Brahmins and this order was carried out by Kaka Sahib Dikshit. Bow to Shri Sai, peace be to all.